Hello everyone and welcome to this video tutorial on how to apply the law on burglary to a criminal law scenario. In this tutorial we're going to be looking at the Richard and his dad's flat mini scenario. We're going to quickly recap what the law on burglary is so that we can pull out the issues from this scenario and we're going to look at how we use the idea structure to apply burglary to a scenario well and pick up full AO1 and AO2 marks. So as always, let's start by looking at the situation that we've been given. So the scenario tells us that Richard cannot afford his rent. He has a key to his dad's flat and decides to sell his dad's laptop to raise the money. Richard goes into the flat, but once inside discovers that the laptop is missing. Richard is angry and drinks a bottle of his dad's whiskey. Discuss Richard's criminal liability. So the question here is one where it doesn't tell you what crime to apply. Obviously, we know this is burglary because it says it at the top and it's a burglary tutorial. But in the exam, you would have had to have read that and known, oh, it's burglary I need to be doing here. And the tip is, of course, when you're looking at burglary, you should be seeing somebody going into a building. There's often mention of keys going into someone's house. Um, it's not always breaking in. Yeah. So like in this situation, he's using a key to enter. In other scenarios, it might be that they go into a shop with the intention of stealing. But if they're going in there with the intention to do that, that can be a burglary. OK, so you need to be looking for entry into a building for it to be burglary. That's what you're looking for. So it'd be logical at this point just to recap what the law on burglary is. So I've got a summary of burglary here on this slide. But I do encourage you, um, if you've not already done so, to make sure that you watch my previous video tutorial on burglary where I go through all of the law, all of the cases, all of the definitions in detail. And you might want to watch it again so that it's really fresh in your mind before you actually try and apply the law on this. So burglary is defined in the Theft Act. So remember, the Theft Act defines theft, robbery and burglary. Theft is section one, robbery is section eight, burglary is section nine. And rather confusingly for us, if you remember, there are two types of burglary, section 91A and a section 91B. But the actus reus starts off as the same for both. So our actus reus of burglary is that the person, the defendant, sorry, enters a building or part of a building as a trespasser. And it just means that we need evidence of entry. So if they get stuck partway through a window, that'll be enough. We've got evidence of entry. It must be a building or part of a building. And remember, we've got a number of cases here, Leithley and Norfolk Constabulary, which we're looking at whether freezes um, or lorry trailers that had been um, left on land for a long time, whether they amounted to a building or not for the purposes um, of the Theft Act. Walkington is a very important case because it tells us what part of a building is. And in Walkington, the defendant who went behind a counter area was guilty of burglary. Even though they were allowed in the shop, they were trespassing in part of a building behind the counter when they went behind there. So just remember that certain areas might be out of bounds and become part of a building that you're not allowed to be in. Trespassing, pretty straightforward. Um, Collins, the sock case that everyone loves and no one forgets, uh, tells us if you're invited in, you're not a trespasser. There is a slight caveat to that if you go beyond your permission. And that's illustrated nicely in Smith and Jones. So you might well be welcome in your mum and dad's house to sit and watch the telly, have a cup of tea, but you are not welcome to take their TVs out of the house and sell them. And at that point, you become a trespasser because you've gone beyond your permission. OK, so just because you have a key just because you are ordinarily allowed in the house doesn't mean you can't be guilty of burglary. And that's going to be relevant to our Richard scenario that we're looking at today. 
The mens rea then is that our defendant must know or be reckless as to whether they are trespassing. And if it's 91A, they intend to steal or inflict GBH or uh, commit criminal damage at entry. So this is meaning they are going into a building or part of a building with intention to do one of these ulterior offences when they go in. Whereas a 91B is more of an opportunistic crime because um, they intend to steal or intend to do GBH once they're in there. And notice that there's no criminal damage for a B. So criminal damage, weirdly, is only in a 91A. Okay, so it's really important that you can distinguish between the two. So make sure that you've looked at all the mini scenarios in your booklet and you've identified for each whether it's a 91A or a 91B. And it gets easier with practice. So now we've had a quick refresher, let's go back to the Richard scenario and see if we can identify what the issues are here. So when you've got a scenario like this, it's a good idea to highlight any things uh, that jump out as being important to you as you read in them. So we know that Richard can't afford his rent. He has a key to his dad's flat. I'm going to highlight that because that's telling us a couple of things. OK, he's got a key, which you might be thinking, well, he's not a trespasser then. He's allowed to be in his dad's flat. But just remember Smith and Jones that he can become a trespasser if he goes beyond permission. And he decides to sell his dad's laptop to raise the money. Now, this is important because what it's telling us is that Richard is intending to steal the laptop before he actually goes in. And he's wanting to do that so he can pay his rent. So he's got intention before he goes into the flat. So that is section 91A because he's got intention to steal at entry. He goes into the flat, but once he's inside, he discovers that the laptop's missing. So I'm going to highlight that. It won't matter. Um, but I think most people, and Richard included, might think, well, it can't be a burglary if I didn't actually get the laptop. But remember, for a 91A, just going in there with the intention is enough, even if you don't get the thing that you wanted to get. So that's a 91A, him going in there intending to take the laptop. But then we've got this secondary issue that once he's in there, he finds the laptop's not there, he gets angry and he drinks a bottle of his dad's whiskey. And of course, that's his dad's whiskey and he's taking that. So that's a theft. So he's got the intention to steal his dad's whiskey when he's in there and he wasn't intending to get the whiskey before he went in it was only when he was in there got angry saw it a bit opportunistic so that's a 91b because he's got the intention to steal it when he's inside so we've got a 91a and a 91b in this scenario so let's have a look then at how we would write out an answer to this using idea so on my next slide, I've got the idea structure that we're familiar with. We identify, we define, we explain and we apply. So firstly, we're going to identify who our defendant is and what they're going to be liable for. So Richard might be liable for burglary under section 91A when he goes in to take the laptop and 91B when he drinks the whiskey. So in our idea, we are just identifying which burglary it is at that point. And we're not saying anything more. We're just saying it might be a 91A. We then define burglary. So you're going to say what the actus reus of burglary is. So entry of a building or part of a building as a trespasser. And the mens rea for burglary, you're going to say that they know or they're reckless as to whether they're a trespasser. And for a 91A, they intend to steal, inflict GBH or commit criminal damage at entry. Or for a 91B, they intend to steal or intend to do GBH when they're inside. OK, so we're just listing them in our D. 
And then in our E, we're going to explain each of those elements that we've just listed using cases. So explain enters using Ryan, explain building or part of a building using your cases, go through all those elements. You can see I've got my actus reus in green and my mens rea in purple. We always deal with the actus reus, the physical element, before we look at the mental element. And then the last stage, as always, we are going to apply. And in order to apply the law on burglary, you need to say whether the defendant has entered a building or part of a building as a trespasser. And then you need to say whether it's a 91A or a 91B and why. And remember, you must say how you know it's a 91A or how you know it's a 91B, because if you just say um, he has the mens rea for 91A, you could have guessed that. You need to explain to elaborate on your point to show that you understand the law. So on my next slide, I've done a bullet point answer to the Richard scenario. It's a little bit small, I'm afraid, because I was trying to fit it all on one slide. So you might want to pause the video here so that you can have a good read of it. Um, I've tried to do colour coding. So we've got the actus reus in blue, the mens rea in orange, and I've put cases in green there. You can ignore the little ones and twos. That's just a really rough mark scheme for if we were doing this timed in class. You can see I've identified idea on it. So you can see where my identification, defining, explanation and applying is. Mine's quite bullet pointy, listy. Yours is going to be written out fully, full sentences, outlining your cases to explain the point. So in BS and Leafly, say whether it was a building or not and why. In Norfolk, say whether it was a building or not and why. Make sure you're fully explaining all of your cases. And then the key thing for us is the application, which I've got here. So Richard might be liable for 91A in relation to the laptop. And remember, we deal with each issue in the order it occurred. So it was the laptop, then the whiskey. So I'm applying the laptop, then I'll get onto the whiskey. OK, don't jump between them because you'll get in a muddle. Just deal with one issue at a time. So it might be a 91A for the laptop. He enters a building or part of a building when he enters his dad's flat. Richard is going to say that he's not a trespasser because he's invited. He's got a key, Collins. But he's gone beyond permission when he's entering in order to steal, Smith and Jones. And he meets the mens rea for 91A because he enters in order to steal. And the offence is complete on entry. It doesn't matter that he doesn't get the laptop. It's complete as soon as he goes in there with that intention. Secondly, Richard might be liable for 91B in relation to the whiskey. He meets the actus reus when he enters as a trespasser in order to steal the laptop. When Richard drinks the whiskey, this is a 91B. It doesn't matter that he didn't intend to steal the whiskey on entry for a 1B. He got the intention to steal when he was in there as a trespasser. So you can see here, deal with all of the elements to do with the laptop, then deal with the all, all of the elements in relation to the whiskey. And you should get a really nice answer then. So I hope that's been helpful in um, assisting you to apply the law on burglary. I recommend that maybe you have a go writing this one out yourself or using that idea structure to write out some answers to the mini scenarios that are in your booklet.